All of the action from the Emerald Ice Block is proudly brought to you by the Emerald Resort and Casino, Yamaha, CCE and IPS. It's a warm welcome to the Emerald Resort and Casino Ice Block. We are just outside Vienerchen on the banks of the Val River. It's usually one of the biggest water sport events on the calendar in South Africa with just on 100 boats competing. It's not called the Ice Block for nothing, you know. Early morning temperatures just below freezing point. You can see the ice on the boats early morning. We went and spoke to some of the contestants to find out their thoughts on the competition this year. Uh, it's uh, my second time now. Last year I couldn't finish because my German tilt was bugger up. And now, yeah, this year is my second time. I try, will try it again. Hopefully, I will finish this year. And yeah, everyone says it's, it's fun. They call him the fastest man in South Africa. It's Ati Tromp, hard button champion. He's here to defend his title in the ice block. Yeah, I think it's a good boat. It's a solid boat like last year. In the end, it's precies the last year long gestaan. So, but yeah, all these fine rockers are off. Yeah, it's right. With just on 100 boats on the water on the given day, just how do you handle the safety aspect and the high speed? Yeah, I don't want to go to the top. Concentrate. Niet te hard trekken, niet beginnen. Het is gewoon ook net om je eerste draai waar, waar je eens terug mag. So, ja, so net om je eerste draai is, dan begin je met elkaar te gaan ja, en dan kun je gaan. Apart from Formula One boats, the hard bottoms are some of the fastest boats on the water in South Africa. Anton Brits has been coming to this event for just on 10 years. It makes him an ice block veteran. Yeah, this is my 10th year I'm doing the ice block. Um, we are hoping for a podium finish today. We've done all the, all the preparations, well we think we've done everything that's necessary to, to, to achieve that. So yeah, it's uh, just a bit of lady luck with us and we can do it. Eh? Up this event always draws the biggest names in water sport. Former F1 champion Patrick Lees was here. We spoke to him and wanted to know what keeps him busy nowadays. Uh, my workshop in Benoni uh, keeps me busy and uh, the last time I was at the house block two years ago. Last year I couldn't make it, I was in Dubai last year. But uh, yeah, I still come here every year. A strong contingent of inflatable boats made it to the event as well. Former Johannesburg man Peter Grunstein won the event last year. He now lives in Cape Town, but he's back to defend his title. We won it last year, and so the pressure is on this year to, to win, it, uh, win it again. Um, yeah, I think we prepared. We did a lot of setup. Um, it's very technical, the South Water. So we spent a lot of time on it. Boats coming from all over the country to take part, all the way from East London, standard class world champion Chad Romans is here. He's got Mike Hunting by his side to assist him. Yeah, we're not really flat water specialists, but we've come to give it a go, just to see what it's all about. There's national year next year, so come and give it a go. We wanted to know from his co-driver exactly what they do to stay away from the cold. Long socks, black bags, kitchen gloves, <laughs> and yeah, just lots of um, warm vests. That's about it. Rocco Erasmus is one of the veterans in inflatable powerboat racing all the way from Cape Town. We asked him about how the conditions differ from Cape Town racing to flat water at the Val. Definitely a lot different. The water is different up here. Your prop selection must be right, otherwise you're not going to make it. And yeah, you have to put in a day and a half's work to get up to the, well, let's say in the back. Let's put that yeah, I know. Well, look, actually, last 10 years, I don't think I missed one. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a nice venue. It's, it's nice to organize all that, so yeah, it's, it makes it a good event. Multiple world champion Stefan Lindigi was at the event as well. And what I've done this a few times and it's, it's always an interesting race and it's really cold here and uh, it's uh, quite, a, quite a high altitude and stuff so it's quite difficult to set the motors up and stuff. Um, I wasn't really planning on coming but I got invited and uh, Tony, my co has never done this so we decided uh, let's come and uh, try and do something here. After all of the boat setup was done, it was time for the pilots and co-pilots to do registration on the day. A lot of planning goes into this event because of the number of boats involved. And then it was time to hit the water. 
on the banks of the Valdan. People were lining up, getting ready to enjoy a day's racing spectacular. Huge amount of craft going to be on the water. Barry Marks in his uh, Thundercat M6 Century electrical boat riding with his wife this year. The two of them teaming up. Inflatables will be the first to leave. They are, of course, the slowest on the water. And it gives them a chance to uh, get away before the faster hard bottom boats launch. As the inflatables get on the way, a huge field of just on 27 inflatable boats leave. As they pass the start finish line, they've got 120 kilometers lying ahead of them, onboarding with Peter Grunstein. Clear water ahead of them, but look, and behind is just a huge fight to stay out of the rough water. You don't want to get wet. The chill factor on the boat drops to just on minus two degrees. So if you do get wet, you're going to require an ice pick to get yourself and your co-pilot off the boat afterwards. For Maine de Kock, spent a lot of time in preparation for this event, built himself a whole new motor. As the boats now make their way along the Val, going underneath the highway, Peter Grunstein, he won the standard class last year, now lives in Cape Town, formerly from Gauteng, has a lot of fat water experience, that's Rocker Erasmus, Transagalus veteran as well in the Ruschenort boat. As we go underneath the highway with Peter Grunstein in the Value Max boat, it's a long ride upriver for the inflatables. Each lap just on 30 kilometers. They'll be doing four laps to complete 120 kilometers in total. This is Barry Marks riding with his wife Dricky this year at the Century Electrical Thundercat. He's won the event before, looking to make an impression on the event again this year. Keeping that boat so well trimmed as at the start finish line, the hard bottoms getting ready for their departure. They leave just as the inflatables are about to come through to get halfway through their first lap so there's a little bit of a buffer the hard buttons of course super fast on the flat water they can reach speeds in excess of 200 kilometers per hour as the leading boats now get on the way riding on board here with Ivan Tabran she's in the L1 class competes with Ati Trump and John Russ Duncan that's Duncan just ahead of him I think it's gonna be a big battle in this class Bart Hendrico and Elmero Rue, they couldn't complete the event last year because they had trouble with their trim. This year they're back to try their luck again. Taking an early lead in the standard class, it's Richard Horwell and Keith Holland in the Lawn Power Standard. In the L1 class, as they go under the highway, it's a huge battle here between Ivan Tablance, powered by Mercury, and John Ross Duncan, who's in the even route. So these guys are going side by side. I knew this was going to be a battle. It was going to be fought all the way to the finish between these two. Inflatables now making their turn at the top of the course. Just on 15 kilometers completed for them. They're uh, halfway with lap number one. Malcolm Hazelhurst and Ferdy Lindbergh, the Hunters Extreme Boat, currently in second place in the modified class. They want to stamp their authority on the event, but I think for Maine de Cork and Jean Le Scutter is going to be a hard act to follow at the front. In the hard bottom class, this is Lionel Duncan in an L7, a very well prepared boat. It looks spectacular as well. He's currently lying in fourth place, just behind Eddie Dalgish. You can see how he's got to work with the controls at high speed to keep the boat in the right direction. You feel every little bump at these high speeds. And a lot of these boats are, of course, built here in Gauteng by Sunset Boats. One of our sponsors as well, sponsoring the prize money in the hard bottom class. Up front, the battle between Ivan de Blanche and John Ross Duncan. We on board here with de Blanche and Ati Tromp just ahead. So Tromp at this stage has a clear speed advantage as the jet skis now leave the start finish line. They do just on 90 kilometers. So a long ride on a jet ski. They've got to stop and refuel a few times as well on the course. They can't do the entire ride on one tank. Spectators coming out in support as the leading inflatable boat now coming past the start finish line. He's just completed his first lap. That's for Main de Kock. Just behind him, Rocker Erasmus in second place. So the two modified boats out in front at this stage. Leading in the blueprint class is Stefan Lindeke and Tony Ingram, Yolandis Aquarius. And uh, I think just behind them, they're going to have Hilton Otto and Andre uh, Nivenhuizen chasing as hard as they can to close that gap down. Of course, Hilton Otto, a flatwater specialist, as the standard class boats now come through on board with Grunstein. And the Fatables also have to refuel a couple of times in this event. Beatrice and Rudolf Butter, the full throttle R23 paving boat, 
moment they're way back in the pack lying in ninth place but they're still having fun and this is the leader in the hard bottom class Ati Trump and just look at the speed this man is handling you can see how hard that boat is working just behind Trump it's Ivan Blanc and John Roth's Duncan battling it out for second and third place in the L1 category and at this stage it's like Ivan Blanc has managed to get past Duncan and he's going to try and hold on to that position. The gap at this stage, uh, just on 40 seconds between Tromp and Turblanche. From the side of the bank of the river, these boats look really spectacular, but you get the real sensation of speed when you're in the hot seat riding in them because you kind of feel every kilometer per hour that you accelerate once you go over 180. It just gets incredible. Our lap two coming in for a refuel. This is Des Porchita and Ruan van Tonda third place at the moment the standard class boats refueling as well at uh, the stage Jakob Klosterzeel and Jean-Pierre de Witt taking on some fuel as is uh, the man who won the event last year Peter Grunstein the value max boat all the way from Cape Town he's uh, having a really really good uh, ride this year riding with his co-driver Nicole Parr let's see how these fuel bags get tossed around that's 20 liters of fuel <laughs> and it's quite heavy up to the and the uh, fuel for the pilot and co-pilot ends up ending up in the water. But I'm sure they're going to have a good day out there. Brett Gosling and Stefan Rotenbach just uh, refueling. The leader in the open jet ski class, Hermann van Amerwe on his sea do just powering away. As we get a glimpse of Vernon van Eden as well. He's lying in second place in the novice class at the moment. Karl Kruger is just ahead of him. You can see how these boats bounce around, taking up every little wake on the water that's caused by the hard bottoms and the inflatables. Many times they had to slow down. Oh, and look at this, Ati Trump going by Peter Grunstein. You can see the speed they're handling. On the right-hand side there, it looks like uh, Jakub Klosterzeel just ahead of Grunstein. We go uh, overhead view of Des Porchita and Juan van Tonda, Wood Pro Manufacturing, lying in third place in the blueprint class. The boats follow a very scenic route along the Val River. We said before they do four laps, both the inflatables and the hard bottoms do a total distance of 120 kilometers, while the jet skis then complete just on 90. The man who's in second place at the moment in the blueprint class, Hilton Otto and Andre Janser van Nievenhuis and Nieven Auto Select. While another lap completed by the leaders, it's for Main de Kok and Jean Le Scutter. Oh, and trouble for Rocco Erasmus. Erasmus stuck on the banks of the Val. That's not going to be good running for the man from Cape Town. He was hoping to make an impression up here. So Rocco Erasmus is out of the running. And that's going to mean that the Hunters Extreme boat of Malcolm Hazelhurst and Ferdy Lindenberg take up second place. So sad news, Erasmus out of the running. Meanwhile, in the hard bottom class, this is uh, Billy Dalgish and uh, Hugo Janssen van Feren leading in the L3 class. In the meantime, Chad Kruger and Wayne Buerta lying in second place in their class at the moment. Not many jet skis turning up for this year's ice block. I think just the cold conditions keeping many of the pilots at home. As the battle at the front continues, view from uh, John Ross Duncan's L1 boat as Ivan Blanche is just ahead of him. And these two are still fighting it out on lap number three. Beautiful shot here of Victor Melvin coming by a hard bottom boat. Uh, Melvin at the moment lying in third place in the jet ski novel class riding his Yamaha Wave Runner. Beautiful shot from the top as the helicopter goes just above him. Back at the finish line, start finish line. We're just on 60 odd boats on the water on the day. Hard bottoms, inflatables and jet ski. Safety is a huge concern for organizers. and They want to ensure that everything runs as smoothly as possible. There were some troubles on the day though. Uh, hard bottom boat flipped on lap number three in the middle of the race line caused the only other day to abandon the race so we've got about 65 boats that entered and that's between hard bottoms uh, jet skis and inflatables um, so it actually makes it a little bit difficult you know to control um, what happened was that one of the uh, hard bottoms flipped in the racing line and another jet skier came off his uh, jet ski which made uh, the safety aspect um, you know quite considerable Unfortunately, with the weather conditions, the wind picking up, um, it made it quite difficult to maintain safety aspects throughout, and we called it basically we called it off after the third lap. Medi Clinic offering a trauma unit on the day. Luckily, it wasn't required. ER24 giving some paramedics a standby for the event. 
70% of the race was run, therefore they had an official result, but many of the pilots were keen to get out of the water. So everybody agreed that they'll do another two laps just for the fun of it, and that's exactly what they did. The hard bottoms getting out first, followed by the inflatables, the jet skis decided not to go out. Now keep in mind, initially they were supposed to do four laps in total, which uh, would have been just on 120 kilometers, 30 kilometers per lap. But uh, they all then opted to do an extra two laps just for the fun of it. So 70% of the race being run as the rest of the field heads out to complete those extra two laps. Now, although the guys say it's just for fun, believe me, nothing is just for fun when you've got a bit of horsepower in uh, your right hand. There's always a little bit of competition involved as the team stretch out alongside the Vol River. Again in the L1 hard bottom class, there was a big fight between Ivan de Blanche and John Ross Duncan for second place, while Ati Tromp was out in front. Further back, boat number 46, that's Nico Vessels and Mark Cannell in a beautifully prepared Star Spangled Banner boat. Out in the course, just having a lot of fun for them. It was a sole entry in the uh, L2 class for Jock Foster and Hendrik Pocketer, but they were still enjoying themselves on the day. As the boats come through to complete their last lap, they only did two laps. It will once again be the man in the green boat that was speeding along. And once again, Ati Trump, the fastest man on the water in South Africa, taking a win in his beautifully prepared L1 class boat. No, I mean, it was lucky. The water was lucky rough. The wind was a bit sterk, but it was lucky. No, I mean, it was very lucky for the boat. The performance was good. But as I said, it was a lot of time. 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 In the inflatable modified class, it was a win for four main to Cork and John Leiskitter. Yeah, we did it on the right track. We did it at the last begin of the year. Not the right on the rear. We did it so that the rope was by the car in the begin. And then we did it right on to come in from far and to set it for John Leiskitter with a bit of track skip. And to from there, we did it on a very, very lekker run. Keith Hall and Richard Holland took the inflatable standard class. I think all in all we had a very good day. Um, conditions were a bit worse than we expected. Uh, a little bit of fine tuning this morning before we hit the water and it seemed to have worked. We were obviously the quickest. Stefan Lindicke and Tony Ingram made the trip from Cape Town all the way worthwhile for a win in the blueprints. Yeah, it was very far um, right up here. You know, we, we didn't know what to expect when we got here to the, to the Vol River and the ice block. Um, but uh, yes, everything worked out fine. You know, it, it was a little bit harder to get our motor going the way it does um, back in uh, Cape Town, but yeah, it, it seemed to have uh, planned out good at the end. The event turned out a big success. We caught up with organizer Barry Marks. We had a good turnout. The weather played well with us in the end. Um, I think some guys were a little bit concerned about the, the cold, but I think uh, we pulled through and the weather came through nicely. Um, had a very good turnout, I think. Good crowd support. So, trying to build for the next year and uh, hopefully we'll have a better one next year. So have a look at those over results then for the Emerald Ice Block Inflatable class. There we go. Stefan Lindicke all the way from Cape Town taking the blueprint class. Good win for him and Tony Ingram. In the hard bottoms though, Ati Trump still the man on top beating Ivan Terblanche with a win in the L1 class. The L7 class a good win for Willy Groenenstein. As we pick up the action for the jet skis, good win for Karl Kruger and the novice class, while the open class went to Hermann van der Merwe and Lucas van Bouillon taking the socials. The long haul racing on the Saturday, a thing of the past, all eyes were focused on the Sunday's inflatable circuit racing. Just on 23 boats would be hitting the water for the circuit race. And uh, quite a few favourites in this one of the standard class. The duo of Pietrus and Rudolf Boerta will be competing in the R23 full throttle, but we asked them about their preparation. Um, we from down here, so it makes the setup and things a bit easier. Um, we don't stay down at the coast, so we don't get much setup done at the coast. So here yeah, it's basically our territory. Well, yesterday we had some bad luck, but hoping today to get a good start and actually perform. Well, they would have a lot of competition in the standard class. Some big names competing there today. Of course, Peter Hurenstein is going to be in there, as well as Jakub Klosterzeel and Jean-Pierre De Witt. Now, Klosterzeel is known as the circuit specialist on the flat water. He's from the Gauteng area. As they leave in heat number one, a great start by uh, Peter Hurenstein. Of course, Chad Romans and Candice Petronius in there as well. As we go on board with them on the Emerald Fireboat, they're going to be one of the big contenders. 
Going around that bottom boy. Oh, and look at this. It's the wet core boat there. MJ Buter. The boat just biting as it goes around that corner. They've got to be so careful. Because that's how you can throw that boat over on a dime. As we get the uh, Buter Twins going by. The duo, of course, rode their very first Transagullas last year. They said they're going back this year to try and improve on their position. Oh, Esli Berry getting very close to them. Got to watch your line as you move around these boys. A beautiful shot from the front, and it's Chad Romans and Candice Petrurius chasing hard to get behind uh, the likes of Peter Krimstein and Nicole Parr on the Value Max boat. Is of course a reverse grid for the next start. So whoever takes pole position or takes the win this time will start on the right hand side and will not have the uh, the best line to that very first boy. Krimstein at this stage leading in the race. He's ahead by a few seconds. But uh, I think it's going to be enough for him just to clinch this very first heat. We go on board once again with the Pietrus uh, Buerta and Rudolf Buerta. Oh, the spray on the back. You can see how they get hammered by the spray on the flat water as they make their way around the course. One look for the clean water all the time. That's where the crop just bites the best. The boat gets the best performance as uh, Chad Romans goes through there. Just behind him, it's a Buter and Arnold Mayberg and the Red Core group. But it's going to be a win in the first heat for uh, Peter Krunstein and Nicole Parr taking that win fairly easily. As heat number two gets on the way, Jakob Klosterzeel gets an amazing start. He's been chased by the Buerta brothers in the full throttle boat. So they're following in second place. In the end though, it would be Jakub Klosterzeel who managed to keep his cool and allow nobody to get past him. As uh, Klosterzeel was the man that came through to take heat. Number two, a great one for Klosterzeel and Jean-Pierre Levitt and the Aquarius inflatable boat. So as we go into heat number three in the standard class, it's going to be a big showdown between Krunstein and Klosterzeel. Of course, they each won a heat. Uh, Krunstein taking heat number one, Klosterzeel taking heat number two. It would be Klosterzeel that takes the overall win in the standard class as he comes through to claim the win in the third heat as well first heat of the blueprint class about to get going and look at this it's the boys from Cape Town Stefan Lindicky and Tony Ingram the Orlando's Aquarius boat getting away first a very deceptive angle as we watch them heading to that first boy but Lindicky gets to that turn boy first he's going to be chased by Hilton Otto and of course Jean Skitter and David Vassona as well four boats taking part in the blueprint class so it's going to be all on the line Otto the man to watch he's riding the PH uh, plant hire new and auto select boat but in the first heat, I think it will be Stefan Lindicky and Tony Ingram that will come through to take the win. They've got that boat so well set up. There's a win for Lindicky and Ingram in the first heat. So it's all to play for as we go into heat number two. This time around, it's a great start for Desport Hitter and Juan Fontonda, the Wood Pro manufacturing boat, getting a good start. The rest of the field's going to have to chase them down. Hilton Otto is in the fight as well. Even Andre van Nieuwenhuizen not wanting to let down the, the uh, positions there, but Desport Hitter and Juan Fontonda would take the win in heat number two. So it's all to play for as we enter the final heat of the day with uh, Pochita and uh, Lindicky each having a win. Who's going to try and spoil the party? Of course, Otto grabbed second place in both of the previous two heats. If he does take a win in the final heat, he could be taking the overall win of the day. And that was exactly what was going to hit happen. Hilton Otto playing his cards just right, claiming that final victory, keeping both Pochita and Lindicky off his tail. As we get into the modified class, it will be a great start by the AA Works boat. Andre Pedurias and uh, Carlo Fiat off the line quickly, but Malcolm Hazelhurst and Freddie Lindbergh in the Hunters Extreme boat in the fight as well. It's going to be interesting to see who takes the uh, win in the first heat. Of course, Andre Pedurias had the perfect line. He managed to stay away at the front, and the win in the first heat would go to AA Works. So we're heading to heat number two. It will be a fight all the way to the line between uh, Malcolm Hazelhurst and Freddie Lindenberg, the Hunters Extreme Boat and Barry Marks and Ricky Marks. Century Electrical, some big support coming through from Freddie O'Brien's family on the side there as he was uh, fighting it out with his co-driver Wimpy Harmser side by side there with Hazelhurst and Liebenberg. And the Cape Town contender coming through, that's Gerard Mayberg and Michael Stevens, Boost Performance Racing. But it would be a win in the end for uh, Malcolm Hazelhurst and Liebenberg, the Hunters Extreme Boat taking the second heat. So the pressure now being on as we enter the third heat of the day. With uh, Petrurius having a heat, Hazelhurst having a heat. 
It would mean that this final whoever takes his final, if either of them takes the final win in the third heat, they would take the overall win in the day. This is Barry Marks and Ricky Marks, the Century Electrical Thundercat coming by. But in the end, Malcolm Hazelhurst and Ferdy Liebenberg managed to outfox the rest of the field. Taking a win in the third heat, that means an overall win for the day. Uh, the water was absolutely flat today and I think our setup was, was fine. Um, the first heat we had a mishap and we did three long laps. But the second heat and third heat we came first in our class and we are very happy with the day. So a pretty good overall result there for Hazelhurst. They're taking the win in the Hunters Extreme Boat for Modify class. Hilton Otto taking the Blueprint class, while Jakob Klosterzeel grabbing the Standard class. So a good day's racing overall at the Emerald Casino Circuit Race. We say goodbye from the Emerald Ice Block, till we see you again next year.